Hello and welcome to another episode of Miniature Painting with the Jolly Good Giant. Today's episode is brought to you by Plaid Crafts and by Mills Community Media. Today we're actually going to be doing a craft instead of doing miniature painting. We're going to be making a dragon egg. This is made out of a foam egg and this one has about 150 push pins this size. This is a, I believe a duck egg size. And before we get too far into it I want to show you that there are two types of foam eggs that you can buy in the store. You do not want the kind that is used for floral, uh, artificial floor decorations. It's very foamy. Uh, lots of holes. It's loud when you scratch it. It's also very um, messy. And stuff goes everywhere. Pins don't hold into it well. You want to get the solid, I want to say it's polystyrene off the top of my head, but I could be wrong. That could be polystyrene. It's like the stuff that uh, foam coolers are made out of. That's the kind of egg you want. So, now that we know that, um, you want to start out with, um, you need a piece of foam core board. I uh, usually get mine at Dollar Tree, it's a buck, and uh, I cut up in sizes as I need it. And uh, a few hundred push pins. You can get 300 for a dollar at Dollar Tree as well. Um, I also need a pencil with a magnet glued to the end, super glued to the end. I actually used a carving tool in this case with a magnet glued to the end, but you can get 10 packs of magnets at uh, Harper Freight Tool for a few bucks. So that's what I usually do when I do workshops and, and uh, for, for uh, conventions and class, uh, school classrooms. So, <clears throat> so you dump all your pins out, use your magnet to uh, just start putting them on your foam core. Do not have to pinch and uh, try and hold these little things and putting them in one at a one, uh, one at one at a time. Sorry for the uh, stutter there. I get I still get nervous on the video camera. I don't know what to tell you. So that's what we do. We get all the push pins in. We, we want to use uh, folk art painted finishes. I'm using light moss in this case. Usually I use a dark rust color because um, I tend to paint. Uh, darker things, but I tried the light moss this time to see how it came out and it worked pretty good. So we're going to do a little bit of um, the moss. Uh, I like this paint because it adheres well to the metal. It also creates a little bit of texture which kind of gives the uh, the pin sort of a eggshell texture. Uh, usually, you're usually going to have to end up putting two coats on. So you go through your one coat, you can either let it sit to dry, or if you have a hair dryer or a hand dryer or something, that you can um, gently blow on it, it'll dry it quicker, a small fan, something like that. Um, after you get your first coat on, you apply your second coat, and that usually covers any reflective metallic left over from the pin. Clean my brush off. Uh, for this egg that we're gonna do today, I decided to go with uh, blue topaz. So I have the uh, Folk Art 651 Blue Topaz. It's metallic paint. So on the ones that the texture is finished there, I'm just going to paint this. And this one's a little lighter, so I might need to do two coats on this one as well. Or you can let a little bit of the green show through. It's up to you. It's a cool effect either way. So then we let that dry or use the same thing. Use the hair dryer or a small fan. Uh, I don't have any examples of it here, but I also used um, the Folk Art 6314 Nickel, which is also a metallic paint, but this one's a multi-surface paint right here. And um, still metallic, but uh, not quite as bright. So it offsets the blue a little bit. Is a, I feel like it's going to look pretty well together. Again, let those dry. Now when your colors are dry all the way, sometimes I like to add a little bit more to it using either Color Shift or the, uh, the Color Shift uh, Dragonfly Glitter. I have the uh, Violet Blue Green over here and I've also got the Blue Flash. I actually really enjoyed the Blue Flash Color Shift paint. It gives it, uh, depending on the angle that the light's hitting it from, it could look anywhere from purple to blue or red. It, it, it's just really cool. Um, effect. I'm going to put a little bit of the um, 
dragonfly glaze on here. Now, when you put it on, it's going to look like it's just glue with, basically glue with glitter in is what it looks like. But once that, uh, the, the white stuff dries up, you just have the glitter and it's just, it's really cool. It's a really nice effect. That's what that looks like. And I'm going to do a little bit of the color shift on there. See what that looks like. I'll probably zoom in after the video so you can see what that looks like. Let's try. So those, that's how I uh, paint my thumbtacks. Make sure I clean my brush real well. All right, so that's my that example. I'm gonna pull up these uh, pins that I pre-painted last night. We're gonna actually do a dragon egg right now, the fancy one. So I'm gonna use Mod Podge. It doesn't matter what kind of Mod Podge you use, if gloss or, or matte, they all work the same, except I do prefer usually to use the outdoor Mod Podge for this project because if you get your egg wet for whatever reason a little bit, you dry it off quick, the outdoors uh, Mod Podge is more resistant to the water. So that's what I like to use. You want to dip your tack in to the glue. Another reason to use a pencil and a magnet because I'm going to put one in the very top like so. And then put another one in the very bottom. Lots of times they have a little dot to show you where the center of the egg is. But it's okay to eyeball it. So now that we're on the bottom, we're going to, we always want to start on the bottom and uh, go in a circle. Overlap your push pins so they look like they are scales. That's the effect we're going for. Another good thing about this kind of styrofoam is if you don't get a lot of Mod Podge on the tip of every uh, thumbtack, this kind of foam kind of pushes together. Um, the pressure from all the thumbtacks kind of push together and help keep them all in place. So there's our first circle. We're just going to keep going. Again, still overlapping. Sometimes you make a little error and put it in at the wrong angle. You just want to redo it. Offset a little bit. Try not to use the same hole. If you were to try to do this by hand, which I've done before I figured out the pencil and uh, magnet trick, it would take you a lot longer and you'd have some really cramped up uh, fingers. So this side, this is a chicken egg, uh, chicken egg size. I should be able to get this done fairly quickly. Something like an ostrich size egg though is gonna take, has taken me up to five hours before to do an ostrich size. So make sure uh, you're really committed to it if you're gonna start one of those. Every now and then you wanna just stop and kind of push in your thumbtacks and make sure they're nothing is loose. Everything's pushed in all the way. It's going to be a very relaxing um, hobby if you're doing it for yourself or for, for a friend. I've done this workshop at uh, MomoCon and at Multiverse Con, both in Atlanta in the past. I expect to do them in the future when uh, conventions are up and running again. So if you're ever at one of those events, uh, look for Jolly Good Giant or Paul Sims, and you can probably find me, and I can be happy to talk to you about it or miniature painting, anything. That's what it looks like, and uh, I think I'm just going to keep going and finish this. It's going pretty quickly. Uh, if, you, if you decide you want to do this and you want to get really creative, I have in the past also used uh, 
folk art uh, fluorescent paint underneath of regular colors and uh, then use the black light on it so you don't really see the fluorescent colors initially but once you turn the black light on you do see them through the through the other colors it's actually kind of a cool effect but I do not have an example of that today in that case I put the thumbtack down a little too far into my cup just want to pat away any uh, extra glue my thumb, make sure I don't have anything on my magnet. I'm going to show you when I'm done the difference between just doing plain thumbtacks and doing some, taking a little extra time to paint them up. Especially using the, uh, the finished uh, finishes, painted finishes rather. Big fan of that product. So oh, I'm going to talk a little bit. Uh, chicken egg here I think is going to take approximately 300 pins. I'm not entirely positive. I haven't done one of these in a long time. Uh, goose eggs take about, goose or duck take about 400 to 500 eggs, uh, push pins each. And then ostrich take over a thousand, if I didn't say that earlier, in about five hours to do. just putting the pins in. So, if you're gonna do one that big, maybe watch TV or listen to a book on tape while you do it. Move my cup of water so I don't spill it. We'll say the most tedious part of this whole process is the first part, putting all these pins in the, in the foam board. So if you can get past that, it's worth it to get all the way to the end. As I'm going so far. important to keep going in a circle too. I've had uh, younger kids in some of my workshops or uh, when I've gone to my uh, children's elementary school to do this project with their classes. Uh, sometimes kids will just sporadically and random, randomly put tacks in but then you have big gaps and that doesn't have quite the effect that you're looking for, that most people are looking for. So tight circles. I also wouldn't recommend using uh, any egg smaller than a chicken size egg. Even a chicken size egg gets kind of tight and um, because it's so small and compact. And it's got to deal with the curve of the pins. So I usually like to do a duck size or a goose size. Oh, and that's something else you got to be careful of. To, uh, when you put your magnet in, hold down the, the tack that you're um, just putting in. Another good reason for a circle, so you don't accidentally pull out other tacks that you already put in. Also, this is not a toy. This is not something um, anyone would probably... Uh, eight or nine years old should be uh, handling. And this is meant to be a decoration put up on a shelf. I have seen kids toss these around, unfortunately, and they start coming apart and need uh, push pins start going everywhere. You don't want that to happen. Sometimes it gets a little wonky towards the top also. You just want to cover all the the white foam. One more. And there's a dragon egg. Compare them side by side. 
So you can see the difference it makes just putting a little bit of effort into color in the pins. It makes it look a little more fantastical. Is that a word? I don't know. Anyway, so that's our video for today. Uh, thanks to our cameraman, Zach. He did an awesome job. And have a great evening.